Yes, I think um, in the I'll, I'll talk example of Edo State, but I know I've read about the Igbos and some of these other areas. A lot of Africans have the age groups. You know, they have the age groups that are the young ones that we call them that the ones that play with the sand. You know, up to maybe four. Then from four, they expect you to go around the farm with your parents or go around with them to learn little skills. And then from there, you then get to the age of 12. So around that age, you start getting serious. So that's when if um, they expect you to start preparing for the future. So then you join that age, they call the youth. Then after that age, you now get to, which is also Western equivalent because our traditional days are five days a week. So when you check the days of age, it's not too far away from the Western age of 18 or 21 then you join the middle age. So the youths are in charge, they, they give um, what things you can do within your community. Youth, like say, imagine I have a festival coming, the youth will do the cleaning, sweeping, packing, things that are, you know, difficult, but not that difficult. But when it comes to, oh, someone has died, like when my mother died, we took her back to the village, but it was a middle age that were the people who dug the grave. So they dig the grave. If there, there's war, it's not the youth they call. They call those middle age. They are the ones that will fight the war. And the youth might just be supply team or whatever. And then we then go to the elders. And for us, the elders are the ultimate, the most respected. Because we believe they would have acquired wisdom. And you find that most people, when they get to that position of elders, try to be a little bit better than they used to be. And they try to now know because they are saying, oh, I'm getting close to, as one of the elders that died in Emory not too long ago says, I'm waiting for death and I'm waiting for my ancestors. So he's proudly sitting there, but saying he, he knows he's dying from old age because he was actually very lucky. He was still able to walk, able to talk, able to see. And then a lot of his mates are not able to do that or they are gone. But he says he's waiting for his ancestors. So they try to now become more liberal in their thinking, less um, less aggressive. in in And, you know, if you go to report things to them, they want to hear from both sides. They want to settle things rather than destruction of the middle age. Middle age will be going, oh, let's fight. Let's do this. No, no, the elders are going, no, we don't fight. Let's try and settle this. So the ultimate judgment comes from the elders. So if you've had problems, you take it to the middle, your first, your group, your youth group, it doesn't work. You take it to the next group, which is the middle one, it doesn't work. Then most people might decide, okay, let's take it to the chiefs and the king, and it doesn't work. Then you take it, final one is the elders. It's the only elders that can find the king in my kingdom. The elders can find them, can, you know, actually try to advise against them being kings. So, so most kings and everybody want to be an elder. So it's a very important. So those hierarchy had been what we have used to give different tasks to different groups in the past. But then they also have now the female side. You also do your, they call them a mix. Because if you were born July 16th and I was born July 18th and it's exactly the same year and there's something to be chosen, you must choose before me. <laughs> Just because even an hour apart, they, so they know themselves, you know, they, since we, even with oral history, which now have been, it's now being written down your birthdays, they know who came first, who did not come first, you know, and even in my household when I was growing up, because eldership and seniority and all this group, all our nannies were in their, let's say in their twenties, most of our nannies were in their twenties, some of them thirties, and then we children at maybe even 10, 8 to 12, 15, the nannies choose before us in food. So they'll put the food out, obviously they've cooked it, so they know the best meat to put in what plates, and we thought it's unfair, you know, and then when it comes, okay, pick up the food, we the children are obviously running there first, they say no, 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 they, will, they, they normally will give uh, more respect to the very last child, the weakest, so the mom will go, no, 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 that's for the last child, which is the one she's very breastfeeding or whatever she's doing with that child. And then, okay, nannies, pick. So the nannies will pick before us and then we take it according to seniority of our age. So the next one, 
The next one, you poor one that is down the line that is just being born. You're looking, oh my god, this is very unfair, <laughs> these wicked people. <laughs> but still, that was the tradition, you know, in those days. They had that, and there used to be a big ceremony when you become a man or when you become a woman. In the maiden days, they most in those days, remember that most of us were not clothed, you know. But I had that the women had beautiful tattoos all over their body during their celebration and then or sometimes they can also make tattoos from uh, that uh, white chalk you know that we get from the river and then they make different signs or symbols on their body to make themselves attractive to their future husband to be and normally before you even get to that rite of age ceremony you would have had a lot of suitors you know when you are born in, in naturally in those days on both sides of the boy or the girl there are pseudo family coming in from all angles saying oh that's my wife or that's our husband or this just giving gifts as you go so as you get older they are trying to meet you you know they are trying to see if you will fall for a family that is not too far away from them or that they know the mother is nice to them or their mothers are friends or fathers are friends and if that doesn't work you go outside but now because of people have to look for work very far away all those traditional ceremonies are actually going but what i find going on too now is especially with the Igbo kingdom they 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 find uh, we find that during the christmas time or during those times is where they normally have their big ceremonies like our biggest ceremony is called new year festival or um Ukwe, which is where we celebrate harvest so a lot of them are coming from overseas and that's when they meet their mates you know so if you've been in boston or you are in us and you are here or you are in london they use that ceremony and then those that are not married now find if they can connect and they said there have been a lot of success in such ceremonies in the past.